Hi, my name is Harry Thacker. I'm with Avachlia. Avachlia is a digital commerce firm. Uh, we have a product called Avachlia Convert. Uh, the product specializes in using analytics data and machine learning to help boost sales on e-commerce websites. One of the big challenges that we always run into when implementing AI is it's really about the knowledge of the customer in terms of what AI is able to do for them. So, you know, AI is a, is a big buzzword right now and it's used by a lot of different companies and vendors and it's, a, it's common to hear it in e-commerce uh, at this time. But, you know, what we have really struggled with is making sure customers understand what AI can do and the specific tangible benefits that it can provide. So what I find myself doing is providing a lot of education to customers in terms of how it can benefit them from a solution standpoint. Artificial intelligence has a lot of benefits within the e-commerce space. You know, one of the big things it does is helps save time by automating a lot of tasks that don't necessarily need human intervention. The other thing that it does is if there's a lot of data that needs to be analyzed, uh, AI can be used to identify trends within that data and find patterns, again, without the need for human intervention. On top of that, you know, the other thing that is a good benefit is that AI can be used to improve sales. So things like personalization and more targeted offers and promotions uh, can help boost sales and that can be accomplished via AI software. AI can also be used to improve the customer experience. Um, you know, chatbots is a good example of this. They can be used to provide self-service to the customer and help answer their questions, again, without the need for anyone uh, to actually do any kind of interaction with them. And then I would say the last big benefit is just from a planning standpoint. AI can be used to help simplify and streamline the planning process, whether it's related to shipping or inventory or price management. Um, it, it really helps uh, improve the ways in which retailers are able to plan for their, for their stores. I think voice commerce is going to gain a lot of traction in the next couple of years. I would say um, it's still a little bit in its infancy, so I do think it's going to gain a lot of traction, but I think the key factor with voice commerce is going to be how some of those assistants like Amazon and, and the Google Assistant can actually use the e-commerce data they have to better personalize from a voice channel standpoint. I think that's not quite there yet, but they are making a lot of headway to get there. I think that chatbots have also come a long way. While they may not be as intelligent as you know a lot of people would like them to be, especially from an end user standpoint, um, I think they can be effective when used in a targeted fashion. Uh, so one example would be self-service related to things like order status and you know, shipping and tracking information, that type of chatbot experience is usually a lot smoother than, say, trying to book an airline ticket or asking a very specific product-related question. You know, chatbots are not quite yet able to do that effectively. The other thing that uh, chatbots are not able to do well at this point is anytime that you have a very specific use case that customers feel more comfortable in talking to a human. So for example, if I have a very complex question or if I have a change I need to make to my flight, those types of scenarios are not able to be handled by chatbots well yet. And so that human touch and the, the interaction that you have with the human is still a critical piece that chatbots haven't been able to solve yet. Machine learning can be used to improve customer experience in a few different ways. I think the biggest way that we've seen is via a lot of personalization efforts that can be done using machine learning. And so as long as you have analytics data and are able to pass that into a machine learning algorithm, you can do things like one-to-one -one personalization to target products and offers directly to the customer that's visiting the site. You can also use uh, machine learning to display the products that are most relevant in a number of different use cases, whether it's search, uh, when you're looking at a category page, or even when you're in checkout or in the cart, you can be more targeted with what you're actually showing to customers.
One-to-one -one personalization or hyper-personalization is a big trend these days, but I do think there are definitely some potential privacy concerns when you go down that path and implement something that is that specific to a user. And so absolutely there are some concerns in, in terms of how that could drive away or scare potential customers. So I think in those use cases, typically the best thing to do is be transparent with what you're doing, the data you're collecting, and also make the customer aware and give them the ability to opt out of being personalized to, to make sure that you know, you're actually being upfront with what you're doing with the customer's data. AI can be used to help improve product findability by leveraging a lot of the analytics data that retailers are already collecting on their websites. So by taking that analytics data and the shopping behavior that goes along with it and passing it through uh, a machine learning or AI algorithm, you can really get a sense of what customers are looking for when they navigate to a specific category or search result. And by understanding that behavior and the patterns that go along with it, you can then put the products that customers are looking for most up at the top of the page, which will help them find the product easier, which will also help lead to increased sales for the retailer.